do you have like a student job you know combined with your studies as well yeah i've always worked combined with my studies um i have worked for my university i worked for their um, social medias so i was like um managing like the pages of instagram specifically and i also worked um as i would like guide international students on how the university life is so we had like session on zoom just like we're doing right now and then if they had like any doubts or anything i would walk them through the process of applying hi guys welcome to my channel okay so today we have a guest isabella and she's going to go on ahead and introduce herself so please do introduce yourself with isabella <laughs> hello everyone i'm isabella i am an italian student i'm currently living in italy and yeah i'm 24 years old and mm -hmm. yeah that's it <laughs> okay so where are you originally from I am originally from um, Ghana and Ivory okay. Coast, okay. but I was born and raised in Italy. Okay, okay, okay. Most of my life, yeah. <laughs> okay, so currently, which university are you studying at? Uh, I'm studying at Kafoskiri University of Venice. Okay, okay. So, can you tell us a bit about, you know, the application process, you know? Okay, so I like I'm not fully international student because I was born here, so I have like Italian citizenship. So mm -hmm. for me, the application process was quite different. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't required to bring any visa or anything like that. I just um, you just have to do two entry tests. Uh, one entry test is like based on your language skills, okay. um, which is like uh, a national entry test. And once you pass that, um, you can take uh, the actual university um, specific on your course or like the degree that you want to do, um, mm -hmm. entry test. And yeah, that is more, it's like general knowledge, language skills and comprehension. Um, okay. This is because I'm studying languages, mm -hmm. but um, based on your degree, you have like different types of entry tests. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So currently, are you studying um, for your master's or your a bachelor's degree? Um, a bachelor's degree student. Yeah, okay. it's my final year. Like I'm writing okay. my thesis right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, what program are you enrolled in? Um, so um, the degree has a long name. It's called um, Languages and Culture of Soci and Society of Southeast Asia and Mediterranean Africa but I am studying specifically um, Chinese and okay. it's uh, economic and law related, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what inspired you choosing that particular program among all other programs? <laughs> um, it's funny because um, in high school, um, mm -hmm. once you reach like a certain um, year, uh, in my high school, you were allowed to choose like a third language. So I was already doing um, English and German. And then from the third year, we could have chosen like another language. And initially I chose Spanish, but like in my application process, I made a mistake and I like chose um, Chinese. And so I asked like my, um, my headmaster if he could like change me and put me in the Spanish course. <clears throat> and she was like, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. And so I had to do Chinese. And then I fell in love and I was like, yeah, let me do that in uh, university as well. Plus, you know, China is like, it's becoming like a huge like power in the, in the world. So I was like, I mean, it's not that bad in, in the end of the day, you know. Wow. Yeah. So after choosing that, they could no longer change it. Uh, no, like I could have like changed school or like, you know, threatened the headmaster. <laughs> but I was like, I'll give it a try, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, wow. And how has it been like, you know, studying in Chinese so far? I mean, um, it's a hard language, I'm not going to lie. But like the grammar and everything is very easy. The only okay. problem is that they don't have an alphabet and you have to learn how to write every single character. And they're like 
thousands and thousands of characters so you never stop learning Learn. which is a is a struggle if you like want to finish learning something because you actually never do so it's a continuing like it's a process that never ends but wow. yeah wow that is so that is interesting okay so <laughs> let's talk about your university venice okay are you on any original scholarship or um even a university scholarship um yeah so in my university there are two main scholarship uh, mm -hmm. for which you can apply mm -hmm. and there is like the regional scholarship and the merit scholarship mm -hmm. um the regional scholarship is based on if you're a first year student it's solely based on your income mm -hmm. so the lower your income the higher um the scholarship mm -hmm. um and from the second year it's also based on your income and also on your grades so you mm -hmm. have to like um, which specific requirements yeah and the merit scholarship is solely based on your uh, academic performance <clears throat> so yeah there are these two and um, for my first year I always apply for my regional scholarship and um, so far I've always like gotten it but also like every year they're like they pop up um every once in a while a new scholarship you just have okay. to keep yourself updated like for anything like there are so many scholarships you can apply for okay okay so how how was it like applying for i know you you're a student basically an italian student but then um how was the process like and what um, benefits were you assigned to when you apply, you have to prove your income. So you have to like send some documents, um, which in Italian it's called ISEE. -E. Okay. And um, if you're like a foreigner, you have to like um, go to uh, an office and then they will like, like make up the, for you. Yes. And plus, the, if you have it like in a foreign language, they'll make it in Italian for you so that you okay. can to prove um, your income. And then you just wait. Usually, for me, um, they they tell you if you are a winner or not around October. Oh, okay. And yeah. then they give you the scholarship divided into two sections, uh, into okay. two parts. The first part is at the beginning, not it's around um, December, okay. and the second part is at the end of the academic year, so in uh, June. Ah, yeah. okay okay so um applying for the um su accommodations and the application process like the benefits is it the same thing because i know in venice accommodation is a bit you know so yeah. is it the same process um so if you uh, are a scholarship winner and if you also apply for um an accommodation but like uh, only dorms they deduct around 1,000 euros, 500 from your um, scholarship price to okay. pay the accommodation. accommodation. Yeah. 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 And usually um, there is, you have to pay a little bit more because it's not enough to pay the whole academic year. So okay. you have to pay around like the first two months or three months. It's like it's on you because 1,500, usually it's not enough. And, okay. and if you, and also they remove around 600 euros for a canteen because mm -hmm. you can eat for free um, one meal a day. Mm -hmm. So either lunch or dinner at the university canteen. So they did that also 600 euros from that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So are you in any of the accommodations belonging to the regional? But yeah. Um, yes. Um, uh, every year I... I I live in a dorm because it's um, cheaper, of course, and it's easier to find. I mean, for me, it's easier because if you're like a scholarship winner, they give priority to you. And okay. then if there are like uh, rooms available, they give it to other people like who don't have like- um, Scholarship. You know, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. But, so still, uh -huh. uh, but uh -huh. still, it's like really, really hard to find accommodation in Venice because yeah. it's, really expensive and like most of the free places that um landlord would like usually um um own to students are uh sorry rent to student they rent it to the tourists so it's like wow. it's a hassle for like it's crazy it's, it's almost impossible to find accommodation here because wow. it's it's 
I mean, they would earn more if they give it to tourists. They give obviously. it to tourists. That's yeah. true. That's true. Okay, so um, the process, I don't know, applying for the scholarship, did you also have to apply like separately for the accommodation? Um, it's all like in one. Like when okay. you apply for the scholarship, you just, mm -hmm. there's like an option and then you select whether you want accommodation as well. And okay. yeah. You're going to get it. Okay, okay, that's yeah. good. Okay, so I want to ask, I don't know, you know, with the regional scholarships, you also have an opportunity for international mobility. Um, you know, Erasmus and all of that. Are you on, are you taking part of any of the program? Um, yes. So um, in basically almost all university, there is like this um, exchange program okay. where students can leave uh, up to uh, 12 months abroad, like they can study and live abroad. And um, yeah, so I decided to apply for this as well. Mm -hmm. And I went uh, abroad, I went specifically to Belgium for six months for a semester. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what I did. How was the experience like? It was, um, I'm not going to say it was fun the whole time. Because, <laughs> um, you know, once when you move to a different countries where you don't know anyone and you don't know the language, because I, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, the place where I went, they spoke Dutch and they didn't speak oh. French. So it was right. like, um, I didn't even know they spoke Dutch in Belgium. Right. I thought it was just French. But still, it's not it's not the language itself because most of them speak English very well. Like compared to Italy, they're like amazing. Yeah. And so it wasn't like a communication thing, but it's like the reality, like the everyday life was completely different from here. And the weather was like raining every single day. It was like cold as heck. And um, but I really liked the university. Okay. Um, I didn't know when I applied, but it was like one of the best universities, like in worldwide, actually, like it's really ha ranked high. Wow. So it was like a little bit challenging for me. I'm not going to lie, um, because the level there is like crazy. Like I thought I was good <laughs> while I was here. <laughs> and then I went and I was like, it humbled me a lot. Like, it humbled me a lot. Like they're really good, like really, really, really good. Wow. Yeah. I know there are instances where when you get assigned this scholarship, if you're not able to meet like the merit requirement, the scholarship can be, you know, taken um, from you and then you might have to pay the money. Like are there instances like that where students have um, had to, you know, the scholarship withdrawn? It's according to the regulations, as you said, you have to meet some um, requirements, but usually um, the requirements are very low. Mm -hmm. So it's it's almost impossible not to, for you to like um, reach them. Like for instance, um, within the first year, you have to have between 12 and 25 credits, mm -hmm. which is like for 12 months, you can take four exams. Like it's not, that big of a deal like even if you take two months sorry two exams per semester mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the first year I took like 11 exams so it's like really easy okay, okay. And, but if you don't um reach the requirements for whatever reason um you are required to pay back the the scholarship yeah and that's that's not nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's not nice because how will you be able to raise that amount of money and pay? Because you don't have them in the first place. That's why you're asking for them. So <laughs> Let's talk about life in Venice. Tell sure. us about it. Tell us. <laughs> so um, I just love this city. I mm -hmm. chose Venice because I've been, I had been here a couple of times before moving here for uni. Mm -hmm. And I love everything because I feel like um, in Venice, there is like the definition of slow life. And it's, it's not like chaotic, like in the big cities, like, I don't know, Milan or Rome. It's like very tranquil and um, life is like, you don't feel like the stress that you feel in the big city and just simply the fact that there are no cars it's amazing like you don't hear like 
um, wow. noises all the time and mm -hmm. Um, people walk everywhere. If it don't work, they take um, water buses, um, boats, whatever. So it's like really slow, mm -hmm. but life still goes on. Like it's not like you're like um, left behind and the rest of the world goes on. Like it's yeah. we still go on, but like with a serene mind, like peacefully. And that's what I really love about Venice. Yeah. No, okay. So they they are absolutely no cars. How does that work? Uh, no, because Venice is like um, uh, a group of islands, like mm -hmm. um, connected together by little bridges. So um, you can't drive here. Um, but if you go to another island, which is called Lido, it's mm -hmm. quite big. So like there are cars there. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it's let's talk surreal. About... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the cost of living. Like I know a lot of people, a lot of tourists tripping to Venice. So I can just imagine the cost of living there. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. Um, so the cost of living, it's a little bit on the pricier side than mm -hmm. the rest of Italy. I mean, mm -hmm. if we compare them to regular cities, I'm not talking about Milan or like big <laughs> city like that. Good. Those are very expensive as well. Yeah. Um, but um, it's still affordable if you're like a student. Um, okay. You can either, if you can't afford living like in Venice, like on the island, you can always live in the, on the mainland, which is called Mestre, which okay. is like by train or by bus, it's like 10 minutes. So it's not that far. Okay. And so most of the international students prefer living there because it's much, much, much cheaper. Mm -hmm. And um, the transportation system that connects Venice to Mestre, it's, it's so good. Like you have buses like every two minutes and like okay. you can also take the tram or the train. So it's really well connected. So, oh, yeah. okay. Okay. So what about student jobs as well? You know, are there a lot of opportunities for student jobs in Venice? Uh, I think so. Um, for like Italian students like me, it's easier, but like for international students, um, the university offers um, jobs as well, which yeah. I think it's easier because you don't have to go through the fact that you have to give like specific documents to the your boss or things like that. And like if it's yeah. from uni, it's certified, they, they know um, how much um, international students can work in a foreign country. It's mm -hmm. so much easier, like you don't have to go through all that process. But mm -hmm. if you want, uh, you can also work um, for international students. I would suggest to work in places where um, they need people who can speak foreign languages, especially okay. English. Okay. So like in bars, restaurants and um, you can also do babysitting or like tutoring kids, especially because um, parents are looking for people who can teach their children English. Oh, yeah. Because um, the level of English here, it's it's getting better, but it's not that good either. So yeah. they really need those and they pay well. So That's true. I would recommend these. These, okay, okay, okay. So yourself, do you have like a student job you know combined with your studies as well yeah i've always worked combined with my studies um i have worked for my university i worked for their um, social medias so i was like um managing like the pages of instagram specifically and okay. i also worked um as um I would like guide international students on how the university life is. So we had like session on Zoom, just like we're doing right now. And then mm -hmm. if they had like any doubts or anything, I would walk them through the process of applying. Okay. And I also, we did events and things like that. So like working for university is actually real fun if you find the right thing that you like doing. Mm -hmm. Um, this semester, for example, I'm also working on the library uh, of the university. Okay. But apart from that, I also work um, outside of uni. And for me, it's always been easy to work uh, in restaurants and bars because um, it's um, 
the schedule is perfect because I work in the evening uh, slash night and then I go to uni during the day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So how do you manage working like, you know, at the library and out of the restaurants and then studies? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I don't even know. Like, I feel like it's, it has to be, you have to organize your time a lot. Like have to be really um, organized, otherwise mm, you go crazy. You have to find time for yourself because it's really important for your mental health as well. Time to yeah. rest, mm -hmm. time to go to uni, to study and then to work. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do all the things that I'm doing. Like I'm used to it. That's why I don't feel the um, tired night and pressure anymore. But like if you're studying, I would recommend one job or like a job that is like, two to three times a week so that you can um, do it along with studying because otherwise yeah. it can get a little bit um, heavy, especially yeah. for first timers. Yes. And yeah. Okay, okay. Because usually for international students, you know, there is um, an amount of hours dedicated that you can work for yes. a week as well. So that also counts, you know. You can yeah, work plus, yeah. This is why I was recommending like babysitting or like tutoring kids because you don't, you can do it and you don't need to prove that you're working. Like, but if you're like working in a, in a company or like in a restaurant or things like that, they have to make a contract. And so in yeah. that case, yeah, so it's very, I would recommend doing like little jobs like babysitting, like tutoring, like doing nails, like braiding hair for your friends, like things like that. You don't need to have contracts, you know. So. yeah that's true that's true okay so thank you for sharing that but then let us come to you know life in venice generally is it like is it easier for people to you know relate you know there's this whole thing usually for international students when you move to a place you want to find out whether you know the environment is conducive how it is the weather how people relate to people and all of that so can you share a bit about that yeah sure this is one of the most asked questions especially when i used to work from my university and the weather is nice all year round but during the winter it can get quite foggy like there is a lot of fog um sometimes you can't even see like um arm lines like it gets really foggy um like for weather, I think that's the only bad side. But also sometimes we get high tide. So yeah. the water levels rise a lot and they go above the pavements. And so if you're not prepared, you have to walk through the water. But um, but they've built this um, system that like whenever there is like high tide, it blocks the water coming to Venice. So it's not ha it doesn't happen quite often okay. only in extreme um conditions, conditions. and okay. but also you when this happens like university closes so you don't have to come to uni and stay home and they send an email they send you also like a text message on your phone okay. and you're also alerted through apps and everything so you are aware when you're going out so like you can wear your boots or like you can wear your raincoat so you get okay. ready it's never like a surprise. Like they tell mm -hmm. you at least a day in advance. Okay. But um, in my past three years, it's never been that serious. Like it's never, I've always gone to uni. It happened only once for two okay. days. And so it's not a common thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as I was saying, it's uh, we don't have cars. So you have to like walk everywhere. So mm -hmm. when choosing where you live, you have to, know where like your campus is because there mm -hmm. are many campuses around the island mm -hmm. and for instance during my first year i didn't check this thing and my dorm was basically 40 minutes 45 minutes uh by foot so it was a little bit of a right. struggle like yeah. going to uni every day i could have taken also the water bus which it's okay too but then you have to pay for the transportation pass, but yeah, so it depends on you. On you, okay, okay. Yeah. Are people in Venice generally friendly? 
Um, yeah, I would say so. They're like, I mean, they're all kinds of people like everywhere mm -hmm. in Italy, mm -hmm. but I haven't experienced like anything serious. Like also they're really used to like international people or tourists. So like, it's not like mm, you don't get there or like anything like that because it's a very touristy country. So yeah. for ages, like since Venice was there basically. So like, it's mm, it's not a big deal. Like if you're an international person, you can also speak English to everybody. Someone will definitely understand you if you can't speak in Italian. Oh, okay. But I still recommend learning the language because it's life gets so much easier when you speak Italian. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. <clears throat> what about safety? Is Venice safe? That's really very important. You know, you want to know whether the city you're moving to is safe. Is yeah, safe? Venice is very, 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 very safe. Like, I've never been to a safer place, actually. Um, but if you go to the mainland, um, in Mestre specifically, it's mostly safe, but like at night, especially around, you know, train station and things like that, it's getting a little bit sketchy. But like overall, it's it's a good um, place to move, yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. So what do you have to say to international students that are coming to study, you know, in your university? I know basically you, you've had, you've worked in the past where you dealt with international students. So there are a couple of things you might have to share with them that would be really helpful. Um. I would say be really open-minded, um, but this is like I would recommend to anyone moving abroad to study. Mm -hmm. And also the first few months, it might be a little bit hard. You're going to be homesick and things like that, but try to engage with other people. If you can't engage with um, Italian students, at least try to find other international students as you, because all uh, international students are in the same place. They're like looking to make a new home, like quote unquote, and like mm -hmm. try to make new friendships. Like they're lost just like you. So don't be scared to make friends, especially with international students. And then little by little, you can also like make friends with like the locals as well and try to go out as much as possible, especially at the beginning, not during your exams. <laughs> and yeah, because um, then you'll get used to like the lifestyle, the people, also learn the language because um, it makes a huge difference. And I would also say just do it, like don't be afraid. It's scary, I'm not gonna lie, but like it gets better and better um, as time passes by, time always, passes. yeah. Okay. okay, okay, okay. What are some of the struggles that you've had like, you know, that some international student that you've, um, you know, dealt with in the past, what are some of the struggles that they, they dealt with? Um, I haven't heard of major struggles, but everybody is worried about not being able to, um, like they're afraid of the expenses because okay. maybe coming from another country where like the value of the currency is not the same, yeah. sometimes it's scary and you don't know whether you can afford it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there are like also the side hassles and you can also apply for scholarships and you can even apply for two, like for regional scholarship. And also if you're a really good student, you can also get like a merit scholarship. So there is opportunities there. And, but I was always check, like ask around and see if you can manage to afford it because sometimes um, people can't. And yeah. also the problems is mainly with people are afraid of like, you know, when you fall ill, like you're sick and like you have no one, you don't know mm -hmm. how to explain yeah. how you're feeling. Yeah. And, you know, but like, for instance, in my university, um, there is this program which is called the body program where local students or people who can speak Italian um, uh, make friends with like international students. So like in these cases, like if you're sick, you need to go to a doctor or to the hospital and you don't know how to express yourself. They're there for you. So you can talk with them first and they will translate. Uh, same thing for like if something bad happens to you, you need to go to the police station. You're always like um, accompanied by a local student 
who is part of the program. So I would oh, okay. always recommend to um, um, participate in the, in the body programs because they're really that. helpful. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And then is it easier to kind of like you know after you're done studying at Kafuskari, is it easier for you to find jobs? You know, especially for international students, is it easier? Um. So. For my university, um, during your um, university career, mm -hmm. um, you are always presented new companies, new job opportunities, which, mm -hmm. um, so they make presentations. And if you feel like you're interested in them, you can send your CV. And if okay. you don't know how to do your CV, there are also courses that are free where mm -hmm. they help you make your curriculum. Mm -hmm. And then you can send them to the various like companies you're interested in. Otherwise, okay. um, you can also search by yourself, but I would recommend doing it through your university because it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And yeah, otherwise you can always work um, in yeah. your <laughs> country. <laughs> country, yeah, that's true. Yeah, origin, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So finally, would you recommend Kafoskari to, you know, incoming students, anyone looking to come and study in Italy? Do you think, or would you recommend your university to them based on your experience yeah i would definitely recommend it because i love that it's a really international university like they promote it all the time they also have entirely um english um, um degree programs so mm -hmm. if you don't feel like studying the language you can always study everything in english which i highly recommend plus i just love that you are going to italy so you're experiencing italy but it's like you're not in italy because mm -hmm. you're like living on islands and reality is completely different but also you're surrounded by tourists you're, you're surrounded by international people all the time so you never feel like the outsider yeah. so i this is why i really love venice and everyone is friendly so it's really nice okay 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 thank you so much for coming on and do you mind sharing your handle so that you know incoming students that want to kind of like ask any questions, connect with you? Do you yeah, mind sure. sharing? Okay. Yeah, thank you for having me, first of all. Okay. And yeah, if you want, I also have a um, YouTube channel, um, mm -hmm. which is called Bella in a Nutshell, where mm -hmm. I obviously, um, I show about my life in Venice as a student, um, all my life basically. So if mm -hmm. you are curious to see how the life here is, you can definitely watch couple of videos over there mm -hmm. and or you can dm me on instagram as well okay. i am uh, at uh, her planet mm -hmm. so yeah okay so guys i'm going to leave um bella's details in i'm going to put it on like you know the video and i'm also going to leave it in the description so whenever you want to you know get in touch with her um connect with her on youtube or that of Instagram, you go directly there and then you connect with there. And then those coming to study in Venice, if you have any kind of questions at all, you can direct it to um, Bella and she's going to help you out. Okay? Okay. So that'll be all for this session. Um, should you guys have any other questions that you want Bella and I to kind of like collaborate on and come on and answer, you can always leave it in the comments. And then when it's possible, I'm sure Bella can come on and then we'll answer those kind of questions. Sure. And then for this session, that is it. And thank you so much for coming on, Bella. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Nice day too.